Hey, hey, what is up YouTube? Andrew Rooney here. I'm a full-time drummer and drum teacher here in Auckland, New Zealand. We have got a PayPal request. Hey Andrew, I just made a PayPal donation for this request. Thank you so much. Chris, that's short and sweet. I like it. That's what she said. And the request is The Who, The Real Me. Now I've been really honest and upfront in the past. The Who is a band that I more or less completely missed along the way. Keith Moon, one of the drumming legends. Let's go check it out. First thing that strikes me is just the real acoustic in a room sound of that drum kit. Oh, it is just so refreshing. By the way, guys, as always, original video link in the description of each of my videos. Please do go along, check that original video link out if you don't want me to stop the video. But I mean, that's kind of what I got to do here. Got to give my feedback on what I'm hearing. And right off the bat, we've just got this real organic drum sound. Love it. I'm actually going to go back. <laughs> I don't know what kind of drums Keith Moon uses, but that's got to be a Superphonic snare drum. Hit me in the comments. I guarantee. <laughs> got to be careful what I say. My pick, my guess is that that is a 14 by 5 Ludwig Superphonic snare. Can you hear it? those crescendo fills. Now, Keith Moon's personality and his stage antics precede him. And for me, uh, despite being a drum teacher and someone who's played for decades, I haven't played a lot of The Who songs. I don't know a lot of The Who songs at all. There is a mystique and mythos around the band and especially around Keith Moon. And just the fiery crescendo into those fills. I'm going to have to go back again. I don't normally stop the video this much and go back, but just listen to the way that he crescendos into these chaotic uh, fills. It's just glorious. <laughs> Shout out to the bass. I don't even know who the bassist is in The Who. I should know that. I'll let you guys hit me in the comments. That is some melodic, beautiful, almost like lead bass style playing. Really fantastic tone and just great ideas. A really full band effort with, with uh, these classic rock groups like The Who, where you had just four distinct parts. Geezer Butler and... Uh, Black Sabbath really stands out in that sense as well. It's just a really individual, melodic, powerful voice on bass. Obviously, Bill Ward kill, killing it on drums. But here we've just, again, there's a reason why these bands are classics. And it's just, it's just so unique. It's just so different. There was something else I was going to comment on, but uh, probably slightly controversial, but I'll, I'll leave that for the end. Remind me to talk about that at the end. I'm 
horn section in the Who? Really? Very, very intriguing. All right, I've just brought up the Wikipedia entry for this because uh, I don't normally do this, but this one's really interesting to me. Okay, The Real Me is a song written by Pete Townsend on The Who's second full-scale rock opera, Quadrophenia, in 1973. This is the second track on the album, although it is the first with lyrics. It concerns a boy named Jimmy, a young English mod with four distinct personalities. The song describes how he angrily deals with several individuals to identify the real me. Okay, the song features an impressive bass performance by John Entwistle. Okay, that was the name I was searching for, the Who bassist. According to a 1996 interview with Entwistle by Goldmine magazine, the bass part was recorded on the first take. Entwistle claimed he was joking around when he played the part, but the band loved it and used it in the final version. I love this. I love this. We have lost all this spontaneity and all this organic playing and rock music today. Aside from the verses about the... Okay, and then Record World said that this tune exhibits the form that makes the group the premier British rockers and praise the fine work from bassist Entwistle and drummer Moon. I gotta say, it really does fascinate me to think of this early 70s era in rock and what became known as classic rock and this British onslaught Led Zepp, Black Sabbath, The Who, Deep Purple, who am I missing? Hit me in the comments with who I'm missing. I, this here, this joking around first take this pure approach to music where you just you're not overthinking things it's just it's just pure it's just in the ears and out through the body and you just play what you feel now Keith Moon is doing that as well I think if you did cover the song you'd really get an insight into how unusual the approach to the drums is how chaotic the approach to the drums is how energetic just pure energy we get i i i've been really bagging <laughs> i shouldn't i shouldn't bag modern music this much but we get a lot of copy paste in modern music and this is the opposite of that and for me that's what rock is rock is challenging that status quo uh paint by numbers copy paste eight bars and there's your verse groove no this evolves this is a rolling interesting performance with a lot of energy and a lot of attitude ah now the thing i was going to mention which um it's always i always never know whether to bring this up because people take this the wrong way and they they might get their back up from for me who not other who listener uh not you know i'm a, I'm a probably going to become a fan shortly but i'm not a fan at this point i'm just listening to this completely as an outsider and listening to the drum part there are what you can only call i guess for one of a better term mistakes what we would call mistakes today at least in the drum part but again what makes it exciting and intriguing and probably worthy of multiple listens is you've got someone on the edge now possibly knowing what we know about keith moon's personality and how fiery he was as a person quite literally a person on the edge and it's coming through in the drums there are there are points where there was almost like um i think it was during the verses there was almost like a call and response like a, a vocal and then it was like a drum 
part and John Enwis was he was digging into that as well playing really outlandish out stuff weird stuff but it was basically like a little drum break and I could hear the ideas that Moon was going for and sometimes they didn't come off and sometimes you basically miss hit something or miss something altogether that you felt like was supposed to be there and that is glorious that's what we want i mean if i go to a live gig i want to see people on the edge i want to experience this song was an experience for me and that is probably the highest praise i can give it chris block thank you so much for the support of the channel and this very very interesting pick remember guys as i say original video link in the description of each of my videos please do go along and support the artist if you would like to support my channel you can hit that subscribe button like button and leave a comment that always helps always love the interaction and i do my best to answer as many of the comments as i can if you would like to support my channel further i do have a patreon it's just five dollars a month and you get access to all the blocked videos direct reaction requests are via the paypal system that's the only way i can guarantee your request gets on the channel remember you as a subscriber of my channel get access to a full and free 30-day trial over at drumio learn from the world's best drummers and you get access to piano lessons guitar lessons and singing lessons all for the same price all within that same Dromeo site. It is truly awesome. It's free. Go along and check it out. I really, really dug that. I've had a lot of people request The Who and mention, you know, Keith Moon as, a, as someone who I've really missed on the channel. Fix that now. I hope you guys dug it and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Ciao.